Hi, this is Anne with what I hope is going to be a fairly quick anagram on functions, um, reinforcing, encouraging, and maybe just giving you a slightly different perspective on them. Um, functions are a really core concept and they can be fairly tricky for people to get wrap their heads around. Um, it's my contention that they that functions in code should be more familiar than they often seem. Um, we have two kinds. Functions that return a value are an awful lot like functions in math. Um, we talk about them a little differently. Um, if you know, we solve for y in the case that's on the screen here, um, where f is a function of x is a function whose value is x squared. So if we solve for y, f of 3 is 9. Um, in the case of a function in code, I guess it's the thing that's solving for you. And what you have to understand is that the return value is assigned to the variable on the left-hand side. So we're not testing equality there. We're actually moving a value from the output of the function into the variable that's being assigned into. Functions that don't return a value should be even simpler than that. Um, they're just like things we do in the real world. Um, get somebody's attention, order takeout. So you know, we've been using alerts where you ask this function called alert to post something on the screen. Um, if you were gonna order takeout or order a cake, you'd have a certain set of inputs. Those are the, the arguments um, like what kind of, you know, how many orders of mushu pork do you want? Um, how many egg rolls, and then um, I, you know, let's not think about the fact that the price as a as a return value, but later after you've done the order, there's a side effect if you have to go and pick up your takeout and, and pay for it. Um, so even though I think they're in th in theory, functions are are should, are simple um, and should be more simple than they seem. In practice, I admit that they are tricky to start with. Um, you have to put several lines of code together in exactly the right order. Um, the syntax, particularly those pesky curly brackets, is critical and fiddly. And when your code isn't right, the error messages can be obscure, um, scary, and really hard to figure out what to do next. So um, I've, I've come across a technique that is supposed to break um, coding down into um, parts in a slightly different way than um, my normal and the book's head-first coding. So um, these things are called Parsons problems. Um, the technical term for what they do is reduce cognitive load, um, meaning that they that you're assembling code from pieces and you don't have to keep quite so much detail in your head all at once. Um, they definitely reduce stress and terror. Uh, error messages, although they still can be obscure to you when you first start, are limited to problems with the order that the code is in and with indentation. Uh, the idea is that you get to focus on seeing the shape and correct flow of the code without getting bogged down by all those little details of syntax you can get wrong. They're a special form of worked example problem, and um, there is evidence to indicate that these work really well for novice coders. So um, I don't have a lot of them, but I think that they're particularly useful in this week with functions. So I wanna show you how to use one, and um, I'm really interested in your feedback on whether this kind of approach works for you or not. Um, when you get to one of my Parsons problems, and this one is actually a problem straight out of the book, what you have is a screen where you've got lines of code on the left and you need to construct a correct solution on the right. Um, it is possible and probably later in the course I will have Parsons problems that have um, extra lines of code so that, so that the correct solution has some stuff left over on the left hand side. This week that is not true. Every line on the left will eventually make it over to a line on the right. Um, if you're solving this, um, looking at the code in the book, then this should be fairly straightforward. You can simply try to build this in the correct order from the top to the bottom. And um, I'm going to just try and do that once right the first time. Um, I did take liberty and give the large dog 
and the small dog, in this case, slightly more different um, output. I think uppercase and lowercase um, woof is not nearly different enough. So my little dog goes yip yip. Now, if you're just playing along with the book, you might think, okay, those are all the right or lines in the right order, so I'm gonna get feedback. And um, I'm getting told that um, the highlighted fragment belongs to a wrong block yeah, indentation. And although this is not Python, and the language itself does not um, actually care about indentation, your instructor does rather considerably. So you, to get the person problem correct, you have to do correct indentation. So all of the lines inside a function are indented at least one tab stop. Okay, and in fact, any line that's inside another block, like an if or a loop, we'll get to loops later in the course, has to be indented again. So that this gives you a sense not only of the order this code should be in, but, but the shape it should be, and, um, and then you can kind of focus on how it runs. So now if I get feedback and I did everything right, it should all turn green. Um, so that's all there is to a Parsons problem. Um, it's essentially just put the blocks together in the right order, get your indentation right. I want to show you a slightly different way to think about doing these that I think is kind of a better approach to functions specifically. So I'm just going to hit new instance here. And um, for what it's worth, if I was solving this problem, I would generally write this from the outside to the inside. Okay. Um, a function always starts with the function line, it ends with a curly bracket. So everything in the function has to be inside those two, that, that curly bracket block. Um, then I would go, and this is a little bit artificial, but I actually think what I would probably do is assemble the shape of my else clause if and else clause. So we know that an if starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket. An else starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket. And particularly as these things get long, it can be nice just to get the pieces in the right place for your curly brackets. And then come along and enter the right lines here. So I'm going to do this wrong. Um, I'm going to indent that. I'm going to try to indent that correctly. One tab stop. And I'm going to indent this correctly. So my indentation is right, my shape is right, um, but if you were paying attention to the large dog and the small dog in the code, um, you would know that that the large dog is supposed to say woof woof. So if I get feedback, um, it basically just says it's wrong or it's in the wrong order, so move your code around. And if those aren't the most eloquent error messages in the world, they're at least a little bit better than all that red terrifying text that you sometimes get out of the JavaScript engine. And now that I have my dog sounds in the right place and I get feedback, my code turns green again. So that's all there is to doing Parsons problems. Um, you don't have to turn anything in, they're completely optional. Um, I recommend that you um, try one. Um, we will be doing some later in the semester, uh, and I think that it's good for everybody to know how they work, even if you decide that this isn't particularly the level at which you want to practice the code. Um, if it is the level at which you like to practice the code, if it works for you, I really would appreciate um, hearing about it in your next status email. Thanks for listening.